Welcome everyone to APH Virtual Excel Camp for Upper Elementary. This week we are serious about science, STEM, at science and technology, engineering, math, and we are so excited that you are with us today. As you are coming in, feel free to put in the chat who you are, where you're from. We would love to see who is with us today out in the audience, all of our campers. So just overwhelm us with so much of who you are and where you're from. Um, and it is great that you came back. Stella from Indianapolis, welcome. So glad that you are with us today. Oh, so it is great that you are here. We are thrilled that you are with us. Today is actually part two of our natural events learning and it's volcanoes are fascinating. I think it's gonna be great fun. Just like yesterday, there's so much that we're gonna learn and get our hands on today. Uriah from San Diego, we are so glad that you're here and it looks like Sydney from Georgia is joining us today. But first, let's see who our instructors are. Who are we learning from again today? And so we have here Cheryl Hannon, um, who is a professor from California State, LA. Would you say hello, uh, Cheryl? Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining you. Just to give some context to who I am and how I fit into this picture as a professor, I actually coordinate the teacher credential program in visual impairment blindness. So how many of you have a teacher of students for visual impairments? If you do, say yes in the chat window. Say yes, I have a teacher for the visual, for students with visual impairments. That, if you do, I coordinate a credential program where teachers get training. And Sarah is saying yes and um, Princess uh, Eleanor is saying yes to having a teacher of visually impaired. So uh, Jonah Bogue uh, is a science teacher out in California. Would you say hello? Hello, I'm so excited to be with you today. And we are so glad that you're here helping us learn today as well. And then we also have Susan Drake, which is a student from Missouri State that's here to help us learn too. Would you say hello, Susan? Hey guys, I'm so glad to be here today. And one interesting thing to know is Cheryl could have been my teacher because I am learning to be a teacher of the visually impaired. That is so awesome. I'm so glad we are all here together with that. That is great. So this is it guys campers are you ready i hope so because there's some fun learning that we're going to do today so instructors take it away thank you so much amy for introducing us and jonna and susie we're so excited to have you here with us along with all of our friends at home thank you for joining us today we have been talking about engineering and crazy natural events so yesterday we built a spaghetti tower out of spaghetti and marshmallows and we had so much fun. Today we are going to be talking about volcanoes. Our natural event is going to be a volcano. So I'm going to reach in front of my computer here and pull up my volcano. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to have you build one of these. So a couple of things you might want to grab if you have at hand a baking dish and I'm holding up a clear square baking dish. As you can see, I rummaged through my kitchen and I'm having to pull out just about every dish that I have to be able to make as many volcanoes as we're going to be making. I'm doing three, but you'll do one. A bottle. So I also rummaged through my kitchen and pantry. I had to drink a whole bottle of water just to empty this one. Um, you need an empty bottle of water, but a Gatorade bottle or a Pepsi bottle or whatever, as long as it's plastic will work. I also, if you don't have a, one of those plastic disposable ones, 
you could use a recyclable bottle. So this is a dressing container for salad dressing and it's an eight ounce size. And I also have a little tiny itty bitty bottle. So you choose the size of the bottle that will work for you somewhere between eight ounces and uh, I think this one is 16 ounces. And that will be part of our hypothesis in our experiment when we, when we talk about the different sizes of bottles. Play-Doh is another thing that you will need. I didn't have enough Play-Doh at home, so I actually made some this morning out of flour and oil and uh, a little bit of cream of tartar. So if you have Play-Doh, uh, that would be really good. But you don't need to have Play-Doh. We can cause an eruption even if we don't have a cinder cone, and that would work too. So food coloring, if you have food coloring, I'm gonna to reach to my counter behind me. Actually, my assistant might be able to help me. Let's get the vinegar, the food coloring, and the baking set up. All right, so here is our vinegar. We have a nice, tall glass measuring cup that has a spout. And the spout is very helpful because we're gonna to need to pour our vinegar. So if you have a measuring cup with a spout for liquids, that is something that you can grab before we get started. Food coloring if you have it. Now I will warn you, moms at home and family members at home, if you are doing this with your student, this is a little bit messy. So you can go without the food coloring, but it does make it fun. So a little bit of food coloring. And um, the last thing you'll need is baking soda. So the vinegar and the baking soda will go together. Uh, but here's the baking soda, okay? So if you want to go and gather your materials as we get started, get ready. We're going to be engineers and scientists. We're going to learn about volcanoes, and we're going to see an eruption. Jonna, take it away. One more thing, friends. Thank you, Cheryl. I want you to remind you, you need to have, it's really important to have some goggles. Now, I have fancy goggles. A lot of people don't have goggles, so just think of swimwear goggles. Or just be sure to keep away because I know that we have we have vinegar, which is a slight acid, and that is never fun if that gets into your eye. All right, so let's start. So today we will do a volcano steam challenge. But before we do, we need to learn about volcanoes, of course. So what is a volcano? Well, a volcano is a vent or opening in Earth's surface, which molten rock gases and ash erupts. Eruptions can cause blasts, and they're called lateral blasts, which means they come from the side, lava flows, hot ash flows, mudslides, avalanches, falling ash, and floods occur. Volcano eruptions have been known to knock down entire forests. An erupting volcano can trigger tsunamis, flash floods, earthquakes, mud flows, and rock falls. So what is the difference, do you think, friends, between lava and magma? Can the audience, can you type in your answers? Can you repeat the question one more time? Question is, what is the difference between lava and magma? Hmm. Oh, I see one answer is magma is in the earth and lava comes out of the earth. What is the difference? Let's see, lava is when it comes out. You are correct. So magma is when it's still inside the earth. When it comes out, it is then called lava. That's just science for you. They always like to give a name to everything. The basic parts of the volcano, there are several parts, but today we're only going to talk about Three. We're going to be focusing on the magma chamber, the conduit, that's a fun word, conduit, and the vent. So the magma chamber is a large pool of liquid rock beneath the Earth's surface. So today, that will represent the bottom of the bottle. That's where we are going to put the baking soda and the vinegar. That's called the magma chamber. The conduit is like a pipe at the heart of the volcano. That is the thinner area of the bottle, and I'm using this area right here, and that's closer to the top where we drink from. That's called the conduit. And lastly, the vents are the openings when the lava comes out. So why do volcanoes erupt? Can someone take a guess why volcanoes erupt, how they happen? 
how they occur. I know we talked about this yesterday and I see, how do volcanoes erupt? How do you think that happens? Hmm, it comes out. Yes, but how? I'll give you, I'm seeing a couple of answers coming in. Pressure, okay. I'm gonna give you a hint. It has to do with the puzzle pieces. Yesterday I was talking about the puzzle pieces, like a jigsaw puzzle, and we've learned from, mag from, from the earthquakes, these plates, it's going to be called tectonic plates. And these plates sometimes move. The friction causes earthquakes and volcano eruptions near the edges of the plates. So the theory explains the process again called plate tectonics. And that's where we, yesterday, we were talking about divergent. We were taking our fists and we were putting them together. And then when we separated them, we divided them. We divided them, that became divergent. And that's where, when those two plates open, that's where that lava can come out. Cereal, also, cereal by on the counter, Maya. I'm, Cheryl, your, your, Cheryl, your um, microphone is on. I know, I'm so sorry. It's okay. And then we also have convergent. And that's where the plates come together as well. And that happens for volcanoes. So what's the different stages of volcanoes? Well, there's three different ways that they say that volcanoes can be. One is active, one is dormant, and one is extinct. So an active volcano is one that has recently erupt, erupted and there is a possibility that it may erupt soon. A dormant volcano is one which has erupted in a long time, but there is a possibility that it can erupt in the future. And finally, an extinct volcano is one which has erupted thousands of years ago and there's no possibility of an eruption. So how many volcanoes are there? Well, there are more than 1,500 active volcanoes on the Earth. We currently know of 80 or more that are under the water in our oceans. And active volcanoes in the U.S. are found mainly in Hawaii, Alaska, California, Oregon, and Washington. So what are the different types of volcanoes? Can you go into the chat window and tell me if you know we're going to focus on three today. What are the different types of volcanoes that we have? Excellent. Cinder cone, spot on. Yes, a cinder cone is correct. And I also see some are saying underwater volcanoes. That's correct. Now, cinder cone looks like a cone. We also have something called composite volcanoes. And finally, we have shield volcanoes. So cinder cone are shaped like a bowl or a cone. And lava breaks into small pieces as the blasts into the air. Composite volcano is also called a stratovolcano. Some of the Earths are the grandest, tallest, largest volcanoes and they have very deep sides and vicious lava. Woo! I don't know if I wanna be around one of those, but I would love to see it when it's probably not active. The shield, you, get, you bet, it looks like a shield. It's some of the largest volcanoes in the world and they are shaped like a warrior shield. They have shallow slopes and a broad base and the lava is very runny. So does anyone know the largest active volcano? I had to look this one up. It's located in Hawaii. It is called Mauna Loa. And it's, it's actually in Hawaii, it's famous coffee is grown in the rich volcanic soil. So they get coffee from that, which is so funny to me. Mauna Loa is 13,677 feet. It is taller than Mount Everest. And we finally have, what is the ring of fire? Does anyone know what the ring of fire is? I know that's a song, but there's something else about the ring of fire. Can anyone tell me in the chat box if they know what the ring of fire is?
Ha, I see that. Kenji wrote Olympus Mons on Mars. That's pretty fun. He talked about that. You must have watched that video or you're just super smart. It's a song. You are right. It is a song. And it's lots of volcanoes around the Pacific Ocean, a series of volcanoes. Excellent. Very, very good. That is the right answer. The Pacific Rim of Fire is an area of frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and encircles the basin of the Pacific Ocean. So you are extremely right. Who wrote that? Matthew. Very good. The Ring of Fire has 452 volcanoes and is home to over 50% of the world's active and dormant volcanoes. Now 90% of the world's earthquakes and 81% of the world's largest earthquakes occur around the Ring of Fire. So now let's go to our task for the day. We are going to build an erupting volcano. Who doesn't like to do that? It's one of my favorite activities. And as Cheryl said earlier, the materials that you need are a cookie tray, funnel or construction paper. If you don't have a funnel, she'll show you today how to make a funnel. Scissors, pencil. That's important, the pencil, because it helps take that baking soda and pushes it in into that bottle. Clay or Play-Doh. And if you don't have clay or Play-Doh, then don't use clay or Play-Doh. It's entirely up to you. I think what's really fun about it is actually seeing that chemical reaction that's going to occur, which we're going to explain what that is and you need a plastic bottle, baking soda, and vinegar. You could add the food coloring, that's optional. I also like dish soap. I like dish soap because it comes out and it's foamy and it's just really, really cool to see. And lastly, goggles. I have my goggles here and it's really important, like I said, to protect your eyes. Glasses work. If you just wear some type of glass, that will be fine. Swim goggles are another option. So Cheryl and Amaya in a moment will walk you through the steps. To begin, you will need the baking sheet to work on because this will get messy when it does erupt. Next, you will place a third cup of baking soda into your bottle. Then you will place clay carefully around the bottle. And remember with clay, oh boy, I had clay yesterday and it was not working with me. If you have hard clay, you need to really take that clay in your hands and just the more that you put your heat with that clay, the softer it will, become, it will come. So just take your time, don't get frustrated and just, it will happen. So we will all make a composite or strato volcano. Those are the largest, grandest ones today since we have a tall bottle to use as a mold. I will now hand it over to Cheryl Amaya, and they have a special guest that they're also going to introduce you today. Okay, friends, so we're all set here. We have our workspace and our work table ready to go. Before we start, let me introduce our friends here. We have Lola. Hi, my name is Lola. And Amaya. Hi, my name is Amaya. And they're gonna help build a volcano. So let's see what materials you have, ladies. What are the three materials that you're working with right now? Clay, clay. Okay. Clay, and this is Play-Doh that we're using. And? Um, uh, a cup, a and water, plastic cup. cup. An empty water bottle, and you put it inside of a? Tin. Okay, in this case, we have a glass baking dish. Perfect. And so, what's the first step we're going to do here in building our volcano? So, we, we take are the clay, clay, and we wrap it around, around the bottle. The bottle. Leaving the top open. Okay, very good. So this might take a, a little bit of clay here. They started with a nice flat pancake of clay and they're wrapping it around their bottle. I'll let you all do that at home as well. Now smash the clay down to make it wide enough for it to fit the rest of your volcano that will soon erupt. Okay. And so friends at home, if you're able to do this, do it with us. Get your clay, your Play-Doh, build it up but into a sure nice tall mountain. Leave the top open. That is really important. Leave the top open. Okay. Because if you don't, then your volcano will not erupt. You're right, because we have to put something in that well, in the yes. hole of the bottle, don't we? Okay. Yeah, let's just... Okay. All right. 
And they're smoothing it out, making it one nice smooth mountain. If we can keep that bottle pointing upwards so the hole points towards the ceiling, that's also very, very helpful. All right, what, what do you have now? You just picked something our up, funnel. that's very important. This our is our funnel. funnel, because you want to pour the ingredients through the funnel. Okay, so we are, we didn't have a funnel at our house, and so we so, made a funnel. By using paper, paper, and we took the paper, and then we rolled it up, rolled it up. So Amaya is taking the paper and she's rolling it into a tube, but she has to find the best way to roll it so the top of the tube is larger than the bottom of the tube. So she's kind of playing with it right now, rolling it, finding the right way to make it become but it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be perfect that's right and so what one way to do it is the tall way and you also could take it the long way and roll it that way as well okay so we're just gonna find a nice way to roll that piece of paper up into a pyramid shape or cone shaped funnel and then we will tape it so that it stays. I'm putting one piece of tape on the seam and that will help build a funnel and we're going to put baking soda through this. What a funnel does is allow you to pour the powder into the bottle because remember a bottle has a pretty narrow hole at the top. So in order to not make a huge mess all over the table with the powder, we're going to pour it into the funnel. All right, ladies, are you ready to test out your funnel? Yeah. How much baking soda do we need? One cup. One, we are actually using a small, smaller than one cup. What size is that? It's one over three. What fraction, friends at home, if you know what fraction one over three makes, type it in the chat room there. One over three, one third Kenji, thank you. That is correct. So we're putting one third a cup of baking soda. So go ahead and pour your baking soda. You can do it over the table so that we, if we spill, we spill on the table, but it's no big deal. We'll just wipe it up. There you go, keep pouring, keep pouring. All right, Anna, thank you, one third. That's right, Nadia, one third. Anna, one third, one over three. And so it's not quite a full cup, All right, keep pouring. Here, let me help you just open the box a tad. And so friends at home, if you have not a lot of experience with measuring and you wanna get started learning to measure at home in your kitchen, Parissa did a wonderful video all about measuring and she talks about measuring liquids, measuring um, powders and um, uh, flour and sugar and so forth. And so check that out. That video is online in the extension activity from last time. I believe it was in one of our extension activities from the animal week. But do check that out because in science, we do a lot of measuring. All right, ladies, you ready? Yeah. Okay, so tell us what you're doing. You're pour, so now you're pouring this. What, um, okay, what's this? We are pouring the baking, baking soda, soda into, into the funnel. funnel which goes into the bottle that has clay wrapped around it. Okay, perfect. So friends at home, if you are able to type and you're able to give us an answer, I have a question for you, you ready? If we are pouring the baking soda into this chamber, that's a hint, inside our volcano, what would that chamber be called? It's a chamber that is going to hold our lava in it. What would that chamber be called? Hint, chamber, that's right. Magna chamber, good job, Kenji. Good job, Matthew. That's our magna chamber. Okay, so friends at home, I'll give you a moment to finish up your volcano. And um, Lola and Amaya, you have just a tad more Play-Doh here. Do you wanna add more to the base of it? Sure. How about we do that, Amaya? 
Carol, do you think that maybe there might be someone who would want to share what their volcano is looking like at this point? Would love to see what your volcanoes are looking like. So if someone wants to show us, raise your hand if you want us to be able to turn. Okay, Kenji says yes. Yay! All right, so I'm going to start with Kenji. And you should, Kenji, be able to turn your camera on, unmute yourself, and we would love to see what you've done. Okay. So this is my volcano. It's, um, it's, I actually had, a, I didn't have a small bottle, so we just ripped off the, so we just cut off part of one and then glued it or taped it below. And then we wrapped it around with model magic, and then there's some baking soda in the bottle. Is that vinegar? That is awesome. I love that you showed us what you did. I also love how you kind of adapted it a bit. You didn't have exactly what you needed for the bottle, so you made it work. I love that. Thank you, Kenji. And let's see, do we have time that maybe we could have one more friend, perhaps show us. Let me look. And so friends at home, we definitely want to see your volcanoes or have you talk to us and describe it. So we have three hands raised. Uh, we have Uriah, Princess Matthew, and Nadia. So we'll just take it in that order and we'll have each of you tell us a little bit about it. And if you also want to share, then please raise your hand. So Uriah, let's hear from you. Okay, Uriah, uh, I have you unmuted. So what I did is I put a... Uh-oh, hold on, what happened? And uh, I, um, I poured the baking soda in there, one third cup. So yeah. All right, well, thank you for sharing what you ended up doing. That is great. Okay, let's see who else we have. Uh, Princess Eleanor, let me get you set up so that you can talk to us. Let's see. All you need to do is unmute yourself and you can turn your camera on, Princess Eleanor. Okay, I apologize that um, we are, I'm at school and we're in a meeting right now, but she's going to show you her thing and talk to you, her volcano. That's awesome. Okay, let's see which way we got to go. Move in here, Princess. how to use this. That's okay, we can okay. see. Can you see it? Well, we see you. There we go. Oh, you see it? see the greatest extent. We did for a split second. see the volcano? We saw it for a split second. Why don't you continue to talk about it and we'll see it? I was about to say summer tutorial. It's really great. Did you see it? We did. Okay, tell about we how did. you did it. Tell her you started early. All right. Thank yeah, you for um, showing us what you early on. There really is nobody who should be getting over. Hello. Over Go ahead, sweetie. Because I, you know, I, Hello. You know, Hello. Oh, um, we started on the. Vac Hello. We but, started um, on the vacant so volcano early a little. We put just the clay on there, and uh, we we had added the baking soda. We're waiting for what we're waiting for, yeah, to tell us what else we gotta do. But mine is like a mountain. It looks dangerous, like sort of a real one. Yes, I love that word, dangerous. It's like it's like a. Real Yes. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I'm wondering, let's see, um, if we have time for one more, I think you said we have Matthew. 
We have Matthew and Nadia who have their hands raised. We would love to hear from both of you. Let's start with Matthew. All right. Go ahead, Matthew, if you want to turn your camera on. Okay. Just... Tell us about what you have. So this is my volcano. I wrapped it around with corn flour. And I put baking soda inside. Oh, and, then, and what's um, in your left hand? A funnel made out of construction paper. Oh, I am, aren't you so glad that Cheryl taught us how to make a funnel out of a piece of paper? That is great. All right, well, thank you, Matthew, for sharing with us what you did. And now we will get on to our last friend here. Let's see. All right, Nadia, you should be able to share with us. Um, you can unmute and turn your camera on. We would love to see what you're doing. I'm Nadia. Okay. I'm Nadia and my volcano has um, Plato around the mountain, like a mountain and it, when I have the baking soda, which we put into the funnel and then in my bottle. And that's pretty much all I have. Do you want to hold it up so we can see it? You can put it in your hands and raise it up. We would love to see it. A little okay. higher. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that is great. I love that you wanted to share with us. Okay, so Jonna, tell us what we do next, or is it, is this? Well, this would be the time to erupt our volcanoes. Okay, so. but wait, wait, I think we have a newscaster who's gonna record us all about it, right? Not until later, that, right now it's your time to erupt, and then after we're going to share the news that's going to tell us and see how everyone else did around but you can do a newscast now Susie it's up to you hey this is Susie Drake your friendly neighborhood newscaster and I will be reporting on how everyone's volcanoes do okay so make sure that you are ready to give me your forecast and report back on how your volcano erupted and exactly what happened because I will be ready to report on that. All right, Cheryl. So make sure that Lola and, Am and Amaya are ready to report. Okay, so we are gonna, we have three volcanoes here that may possibly <laughs> erupt today. We're gonna look at the tallest volcano. So if you all remember, we have the tallest bottle in our volcano and let's move it right here in front of this camera. And we have our vinegar here. And we're going to add a, just a tad bit of food coloring to it. What color lava okay. do girls want? Do you want blue lava today or red lava? Blue. blue. Blue lava. And so friends at home, we learned that some volcanoes actually do have blue lava. And I talked about that in my video if you were to check out extension number one. So here we go. When I count down and I say the magical words blast off, we will pour the vinegar carefully into the funnel. We're actually gonna use that funnel one more time and it's gonna get a little bit wet. We're gonna pour this into the funnel. And then we're gonna quickly move away. Now friends at home, if you have your goggles on, this is the time to wear. We don't have goggles, so we are wearing our um, snorkel mask. and- Snorkel gear. Snorkel gear, okay, go slow with the, slowly up to the top of your funnel. Ready, three, two, one, blast off! Whoa! <laughs> oh my goodness. That's kind of crazy. I hear fizzing and I tried to pull that funnel away as quickly as I could and shot out the top of my funnel. 
Wow, that lava you created as a result of a chemical reaction. You created a chemical reaction. The chemical reaction happens when the baking soda and the vinegar mix. In this reaction, what happened is carbon dioxide gas was produced. Pressure built up inside the plastic bottle and the gas bubbles came out of the volcano. This is a good representation of what truly happens in real volcanoes. Girls, what did you think? Cool. Mm -hmm. Friends at home, I wanna hear from you. What happened with you? How much vinegar did we use? We used one cup. One cup. It was one cup. Friends at home, how did it go? You want to put in the chat, you can put in the chat what you want or just raise your hand. Okay, Uriah, go ahead and you can tell us about what, this time we'll keep our camera off and you can just use your words to talk about and describe what happened. <clears throat> so I poured more vinegar into the funnel and then uh, and then it exploded when I put even more vinegar. That is great. It exploded. I love hearing the words that you're using to describe what happened. Thank you, Uriah. Is there anyone else who wants to tell us? Let's see, so I hope I say your, oh, I'm looking and, oh, Princess Eleanor would like to be able to share with us. So this time, Princess Eleanor, we're just gonna use your words. We won't turn our camera on this time. Tell us, what words would you describe? I would describe spectacular. Ooh. It was spreading all the way out there and it went like, <laughs> And it went like, and it spread it all the way over there, and it was going, it stopped right now, it, unless I do like that, it goes a little bit with my finger. Like it, throwing up the bacon soda that didn't fuzz. Yeah. Yeah. That just was so fun and lovely. That is awesome. I loved your sound effects. That was great. All right, so, and I know, let's see here, I'm gonna pronounce your name. I, did a, I didn't do a good job yesterday, and I'm gonna say it looks like it's Ruritan, but I need you to correct me so that I t say it the right way. I'm gonna let you talk, and you can unmute, and tell us how we can say your name the right way. So I don't make a mistake. And then you, what words would you say to describe your chemical reaction? Um, my name is Brereton and the, it erupted well, like at the top and well, it spilled all over the okay. dish. It came out of, on the top and it spilled out all over. That is great, yes. And let's see, um, do we have time? We can take another one here. Um, boy, I am not great with names and I know we've gone over these two. I have, oh, you know what, Cheryl, would you help me out with how we might pronounce could it be Raritan? Say it again. Raritan? Oh, next I, one. Uh, I think that's his dad. Uh -huh. All right. Well, perhaps you can introduce yourself and tell us all about it. So, I have you unmuted. My name is Rootwick, and so mine didn't actually work. Oh. So, yeah. Maybe you can tell us what happens. Basically, Did we poured the vinegar inside the water bottle, and then like it kind, it just like 
it just went up and then it probably just like went down to the bottom again. Aha, okay. I have and a question for you. Did you use the funnel? Yeah, I used the funnel. I made it out of uh, paper. Okay, so sometimes in science that happens. That's why we have to try it again and again and again. And let me tell you, I've been teaching science for 15 years and I can't tell you how many times where I'm like, how come it didn't happen? So just try it again. If you put in baking soda at the bottom, you put in about a third. And then if you add, you have to make sure you add enough vinegar. That's key. So sometimes if it didn't come out, maybe that vinegar was not enough. How much vinegar did you use? Well, we tried like uh, using like a little bit first. Yeah, that may have been why it didn't erupt. So just try using more vinegar. Thank you, thank you, Rutwick. And uh, Matthew, will you tell us uh, what words would you use to describe what happened in your home? <coughs> We can hear you. <clears throat> so here's how it went. So we poured baking soda into the volcano and then we poured vinegar and then the whole thing bursted. Ooh, bursted. Oh. Yeah, it went kapow. That is a great, great sound effect. Thanks. Yeah, all right, thank you. I think, friend, instructors, that we are caught up for right now on who wanted to share with us. So it is back to you for a bit. Okay, so one of the things that we were looking at as a variable to the eruption is the size of the bottle. And so I went through my house and, and had to find a bunch of different bottles, but I found this recyclable bottle. This is one that we refill many different times and it's sort of rectangular in shape. And so it's tall and skinny and the face of it are four different rectangles, sort of like a bottle of dressing, like salad dressing. And it has quite a wide mouth. It's about maybe one and a half inches across. I also found a uh, water bottle that's one of the short stubby fat water bottles it's an eight fluid ounce water bottle and so this one is wide at the bottom and a skinny top and then the one that we did first was the taller 16 ounce water bottle so what we're going to do now is do a second eruption and you're welcome to try a second eruption at home as well jana do you want to share anything about any other variables well, if you, when you're ready, I'm, I'm ready to show a little bit of different variations. So it, you can do this again and again. I do know that your clay may be wet. So it is important to, if it gets baking soda and the vinegar, you can always just put it under water, um, running water, and you can try to empty out what you had in there. That's usually what I do. So I'm going to show you a couple of variations. I have two volcanoes that I created, but first I need to put on my goggles. After seeing Cheryl's explosion, I quickly ran out. I did have a baking dish, but I decided to get a big pan <laughs> because I'm working right in front of my computer and I got a little nervous when I saw the explosion. So I'm gonna ask you, what would happen if we add more vinegar? Do you think it would be better to add more vinegar? I don't know. So that's something you can do. You can use a third of baking soda and then just add, what if you added two cups of vinegar? What would happen? Would it have a big blast off? But what would happen if we used more soap? I did put soap in mine and I've done that before. So you might want to experiment again using more soap. What would happen like Cheryl showed you with a different shape for the bottle? If you don't use a water bottle, if you used a wider opening, would it be better? Or would it be better with a smaller opening? So today what I'm going to do, I'm going to retry. I'm going to show you my 
volcano here and it, it's I mine is the color of red and blue and it's really fat. I used a lot of clay. My hands have been blue for a whole day using that blue clay. And what I'm going to do right now, I have this volcano has a third cup of baking soda. So I'm going to have you watch this first and then compare it if we use three quarters of baking soda. Do you think that will be, make a difference? Do you think using more baking soda will have a better blast off? Please write in what your thoughts are. What are your predictions? More baking soda will be better or less baking soda will be better? More, I see from Kenji, more baking soda would make a bigger explosion and then less baking soda would probably be more clean. <laughs> I like that. Nadia, more baking soda is better, okay. I don't know, this is a tough one, right? It's one of those things, more, Matthew says more baking soda, okay. Well, I am going to try it right now. So this is the one with only a third of, of um, baking soda. I'm gonna tell you what happens here. I'm a little scared that it's going to blast. I have a big funnel. So I'm gonna put my funnel and the secret is I'm gonna move my funnel away and see what happens. Let's count down together. Are you ready? We're going to say three, two, one, blast off. And I'm gonna just, I hope it doesn't hit my face. <laughs> so here we go, three, Two, one, blast off. Oh! <laughs> that definitely caused a little bit of a mess and it, I have a baking pan. I will definitely have to get some napkins soon. So let me take a moment. So that was a pretty big explosion and it set off so quickly. But this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that mess over and that's what happens with science. I'm used to this, my friends. And now I'm gonna bring in the volcano and I added this time three quarters of baking soda. Hmm, so let's see. Oh no, I'm scared. I think this will be really cool. All right, are we gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing again. We are going to add a three, two, one blast off. Are you ready to count down with me? Three, three, two, yeah. one, blast off. <laughs> it actually hit my computer screen. Well, I don't know what just happened, but I know that, let me just try to wipe off my screen so I could see you. I know that that definitely caused a big reaction. Now, here's the funny thing, which doesn't always happen with science. Let me move my camera. The funny thing is, is that adding more baking soda typically should delay the eruption that didn't happen at that moment so sometimes that happens with science but adding more vinegar is actually better it causes more of a fizzy explosion so when i added more vinegar this time that this one was way more fizzier the first one ex compared to the one with more baking soda so you can always continue experimenting at home that is how you learn and i want to make sure you again know that we just created a chemical reaction and Susie is going to talk about that chemical reaction. Hey guys, so let's talk about chemical reactions. Can you tell me, you can tell me in the chat or you can raise your hand, what two things we mix together to create a chemical reaction? So there's, uh, and there's a lot of different ways we can make a chemical reaction, but there's two things that we used to cause that, which caused the eruption. What well, an acid, yeah, but there's one thing that, um, that we used to be our specific ingredient in this experiment. Um, so one of them, I'll give you a hint. One of them was a powder and you put it, right, baking soda and vinegar. So those are the two things that we used to cause um, our chemical reaction. And they um, exploded. Um, and some, we saw some different things. So can you tell me, 
um, some of the things you experienced after your chemical reaction. So I observed my observations. I'll give you some examples and then you finish. I observed um, that the volcano went really high and Jana observed that it was really foamy. What else might you have observed? We what do else have a hand raised. Oh, I'm a, is it Amaria? Is that it? How you pronounce yep. it? Go ahead. I, I think so. You can go ahead and speak. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I observed that it went really high and it went everywhere and it was really foamy. <laughs> yeah, everywhere. I observed that it went everywhere also. Did you notice that if we changed ingredients, that something about the reaction changed? Like if we change the amount of ingredient? Um, yeah, when we change the amount of baking soda, it went higher. And when we change the amount of vinegar, it got more fizzy. Absolutely, absolutely, good job. So yeah, you guys have some great, great observations. Um, so people, so everybody's observing that um, what at one point it was really fast, um, it was really bubbly. Kenji's asking what would happen if you put vinegar first and then added baking soda. Um, so I don't think the reaction is as strong, Kenji, um, because it, the baking soda dampens the vinegar, so it doesn't you don't get that explosion. And I, John, I can correct me if I'm wrong, but that has been my observation. But you know. This is science, so maybe you should do that experiment and let us know. I would like to find out. So that is um, a chemical reaction in a nutshell, but what really causes a chemical reaction in a volcano? What causes that pressure to build and the eruption to occur? Not yet. I'm gonna try with a shorter container. Great. So it's the plate tectonics. It's the shifting of our earth that causes pressure to build and the explosion to occur. And that is what causes a chemical reaction and a volcano eruption to occur. And so um, we're, our, the plates under the earth or the continents are always shifting. And so that's why um, some volcanoes are dormant some are extinct and some are active because our, our plates are always shifting. And so that, my friends, is a chemical reaction in a volcano and what's really going on with your plate tectonics. And uh, Susan, and we have another eruption that's about to occur. We so do. We do. And we have the two girls are ready with their goggles. Friends at home, we are now using the short bottle. So you tell us in the chat window, is this going to be a tall eruption, a lingering eruption, a bubbly, fizzy, slow eruption? Tell us what you think is going to happen and then help us count down and we will do our last eruption. Susie says she thinks it will be tall. Well, it's going to be Okay, one. let's see what happens. Three, two, one, blast off! <laughs> okay, so that one was a little slow to react. It took a little while for it to fizz. It's really soapy. And there was more vinegar than I think fit in the bottle. And so it took a while and it was very, very fizzy. We added a little dish soap to this one. And so it's pouring down the sides right now and it's a little bit fizzy. So thank you, friends, for joining us. This does bring us to a conclusion of our activity for today. Thank you so much for joining us with Volcanoes for our STEM engineering Serious About Science lesson for today. To, there is an extension activity coming out today. It's how to build a catapult. So if you would please take the, a look at the catapult lesson, send in your pictures. We would love to see it. But remember, we have that photo contest coming up. Thank you girls for joining us today. Check out that web message for the ingredients and say goodbye.
Well, we are so happy that you all were with us today. This was a uh, great time. I loved all of the uh, vocabulary, all the words that we were using today. Um, some of the, the words that I heard were foamy, an explosion, fizzy, pressure, fast. I love all those science words. And you know, just as Cheryl was mentioning, tomorrow's gonna be awesome because tomorrow's crazy natural event is tornado. So I know that you don't wanna miss out. And just like Cheryl said, go to the extension activity, um, take a picture, send us the picture. We would love to have it to include in our introduction tomorrow and share out. So until then, we hope you campers have a great day and we look forward to learning with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.